All right, so we're here. We're in our last week. Some of y'all are gonna cry because we're in our last week. I've already seen in some of the groups where y'all been like, oh gosh, I can't believe it's our last week, but we will take a little break and we'll come back full and strong and ready to go. And you can get in new groups and make new relationships and it'll be so awesome. So I'm so uh, excited about so many of y'all. Priscilla said when she asked how many of y'all have been here every night of the semester that tons of people raised their hand. And that is so exciting to me that God is working in such a big way, in such an exciting way, that you would want to come back every single week, regardless of all the things that happen in our crazy lives as women. And so thank you for making the time to be here and setting that aside and making it important, because it is important for God to pour into us so that we can pour into everybody around us. And so we have to get fed to do that. So um, thank you also to our online community who's been watching, getting so many emails about you watching. I'm glad that you can be a part here and feel like you're family, even if you're not here, and so physically, but you're here with us in spirit. And so thank y'all for watching and for learning and growing online as well. That's been really awesome this semester. And so, so we've talked about a whole bunch of stuff this semester. And my goal tonight, as I was praying it through, God was just saying, wrap this thing up. <laughs> and I was like, okay, God, that's really cool. How are we going to wrap this thing up? And my goal tonight is to give us some points to, to drive home. Because if we just go through all of these things that we've talked about this semester, if we just do that and it doesn't affect our everyday life, then we've wasted that that we've gone through. And we don't want to do that. We want to be able to use what God has given us this semester um, to be able to have life change in our lives and then hopefully affect some other women because, you know, we're, we're world changers. Did you know that? You're a world changer. In your world, wherever you are, you're a world changer. And that's we, we need to learn how to change the world around us. And so that's what we're going to do tonight. So we're going to kind of wrap it up. But before we do that, let's talk about some things that we've talked about and learned about this semester. And you're going to be surprised at all the things we've learned. And I know this is just a snapshot because who knows what God has revealed to you through what we've done this semester. But we talked about um, being able, we talked about being uninvited, first of all, right? That everybody at some point has felt uninvited, less than, left out, lonely, unloved, whatever that looks like. We talked about pretty much everybody has felt that at some point in their life. And then we talked about living loved. Are we able to live loved? Are we able to, to not worry about the scraps of love that we get from everybody else, but be able to live loved by God and to, to live our lives out in that love, knowing that we are enough because God says that we are enough. Have we done that? And then we talked about empty or full. We talked about coming into situations in our life empty, like needing something from somebody else, or coming into our life full on God, that we can be able to change the world around us and be change agents in the world around us. We talked about that. We talked about bringing, um, we talked about being a victim or having victory, right? We, that was a great lesson for me about um, coming into life, not being a victim of what's been done to me or said to me or how I felt, but realizing that I can have victory in Christ, realizing that he can change that. And then we talked about <clears throat> set aside or set apart. Priscilla brought a great message. I thought it was so good about a lot of times when we feel set aside in life, actually God is setting us apart for something else. We just may have to wait on that, for, that to come to fruition. And so we don't like to wait too much, do we? <clears throat> kind of stinks. But we talked about that. And then last week, I wasn't here because my daughter had surgery. And by the way, she's doing great. Thank you all for praying for her. She's actually here tonight. And she's been at school the last couple days. And so she's doing really good. So thank you all for that. But I was home with her last week. And, but you all got to hear about the miracles in the mess and it was great to hear the panel that actually talked about when they thought that their life was a mess, at their worst mess, was actually when God was doing a miracle in their life. And so we have talked about, when you look at all that, the compendium of all that, that's a lot of stuff that we went over and we talked about. So how are we going to tie all that up 
tonight because I'm the type of person, I'm a practical girl. I don't know about y'all, but I need this to come out in my life somehow in a practical way. And I need to see the life change that comes from this. So let's talk about that a little bit tonight because overall we have talked about pain, we've talked about hurt, we've talked about rejection, we've talked about struggle, we've talked about all the things that are kind of, you know, we went in and, and this is going to kind of gross some of y'all out, but we went in and we scraped the scab off of all the nasty things in our life and our past. And what we don't want to do is we don't want to go in and just leave it like that where it heals with the bad stuff still in it. What we want to do is we want to go out and we want to get all the infection out. We want to get all the nastiness out so that it can heal healthy with God. That's what we're looking for this semester, and that's what we're looking for tonight. Lisa Turkhurst says it this way, heartbreaking seasons can certainly grow me, but were never meant to define me. Those seasons that we go through, God uses those in our lives to shape us, but that was never meant to define who I am. She also said, if we avoid the hurt, the hurt creates a void in us. Sometimes we're lost. We have that void in us. But we can't avoid that pain. We can't avoid that hurt because that pain and that hurt causes bitterness. So tonight we're going to see we have this pain from rejection, okay? We have this pain from being hurt, this pain from being lonely, this pain from the struggle, whatever it was. And tonight we're going to look at what do we do with all that? We've learned all this stuff. Now what are we going to do with it? And tonight, I give you that you have three choices. You have three choices when it comes to what do I do with this that I've learned. And you, I, I can tell you that you can choose. You know how I know that you can choose? In John 7, 17, it says, anyone who chooses to do the will of God. That means I have a choice. I have a choice of what to do with this information. I have a choice of what to do with what God has revealed to me. And so tonight, we're going to look at those three choices, and we're going to talk about those, and we're going to see which one you're going to choose to uh, relay this information. What are you going to do with this information? And so I brought a little video because I want you to look at this video, and I want you to decide what the number one is. I think you can pick it out just by looking at the video, what number one is, what the first choice that we can make with what we've been given this semester. So watch this video with me as we decide what that number one is. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> How did you put it in there in the first place? I don't know. Do it sideways. <laughs> Got <laughs> his braces stuck to the carpet right now. Did you fall in the toilet? You're taking a bath. Take the net off. <laughs> I need some help. I can't get out. No matter what. What happened? I caught. I we caught a human. Well, did we caught a human. What? How did you get stuck in the? You needed to get the tuna? Okay, so I just want to say, where are their parents? But you know they do that when you're, you know, in the other room and then, you know, you come back and you find them like that. Um, but you know, what is the thing that you think that that video is saying that we could do with what we've been given? We could stay 
stuck. That's right. We could stay stuck and we could just not use any of the information that we've been given, not use anything that God has revealed to us. We could look at it and we could say, you know what? That's too much. That's too much to deal with. I don't want to have anything to do with that. And we could just stay stuck where God has placed us, where, where we have placed ourselves, not where God has placed us. We could stay stuck in that spot. And we, I don't know about you, but there's sometimes in my life when my kids or when my husband, bless his heart, or when my friends come up and they'll say something to me, and because of a past rejection, I totally overreact to what they just said. So like I may be thinking that they didn't appreciate me this week and that I feel rejected because they didn't appreciate me and then they ask me for, can I have some milk? And I turn around and say, get your own milk. You know what I'm saying? Like, do y'all ever do that? Um, but that's just a little snapshot. But uh, there's worse things than that, but that's the one I chose to use tonight um, because it didn't make me look quite so bad. Um, but you know, there's times in our lives when we do that. We have those past rejections, but we choose to stay stuck. And we choose to not get the freedom from God. And sometimes we, that just, it, we, we have that information. We have it revealed to us but we don't know how to use it, and so we stay stuck. And Ephesians 4.31 says, Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. And some of these evil behaviors, these harsh words, this slander that we have in our life, this anger, sometimes that's because we're dealing with those past rejections still, and we've chosen to stay stuck. And we've chosen not to use what God has revealed to us to move us to a different place. Matthew 15, 18 says, but the words you speak come from the heart. That's what defiles you. So when it comes out my mouth, it's really in my heart first. And so you may say, well, like me, I've thought about before about duct tape over my kids' mouths. I've just thought about it. I hadn't really tried it. I wanted to. Um, but that's not, the, that's not the remedy. The remedy is not to shut the mouth, although we'll be talking about that next semester <laughs> and <laughs> keeping your mouth shut. And it's, sometimes it's a good thing. Um, but really, the remedy is, is for the heart to change so that when the heart changes, what comes out of the mouth is directly from the heart, and it's good things because we really have a responsibility with our lives to lead others to Christ. And when we are angry and malicious and have evil behavior, people kind of look at us and go, hmm, I'm not sure I want what she's got. <laughs> but when we have the fruit of the Spirit, when we're loving, when we're kind, when we're giving, that, those behaviors only come from when they're rooted in the heart. And then people say, oh, I want what she has. And that's Jesus. And so we have to be careful not to stay stuck in the information that God has given us, but to use that information. Uh, Lisa Turker said, pain is the invitation for God to move in and replace our faltering strength with his. Pain's not necessarily bad. God will use it, but we can't stay stuck in it. And I believe that we can be healed from the hurts of those things. So our first one is choice that we could make is to stay stuck, okay? We could choose that. The second choice that we could choose is to run away. We could choose to just run away. We could choose, typically what we do is we run away from God and we run to something else. We could choose to be numbed a little bit by the pain of what we've been through with something that could temporarily fix our issue. And this could be a number of different ways that this could happen. We could run away from relationships that we should stay in, but we run away from them because we don't want to deal with our, our anger and our bitterness and our hurt, our resentment. Um, it also could be other things, like some of us run to alcohol, and that numbs us for a little bit so we don't have to deal with our pain. Um, some of us run to entertainment. What can I, how can I feel better for a moment from entertainment? Some of us run to achievement. Oh, if I just do more, if I can just accomplish more, then I'll feel good about myself again. There's all kinds of things we run to. It may be drugs, it may be food, it may be whatever that thing is that we run to that numbs that pain for the moment, but it doesn't fix it, does it? The pain always reemerges when Christ is not the center of the fix. Now, 
In Lisa's, in Lisa's book, she says, numbing the pain never goes to the source of the real issue to make us healthier. It only silences our screaming need for help. See, pain is that indicator that we need help. But the fix is not these temporary fixes. It's actually turning to God with those issues. And I, I have a story in the Bible that uh, is so good, that, that makes this point so well about running away. And it actually has to do with Jesus. And just for anybody who thinks that Jesus doesn't understand what I've been through, let's talk about the rejection for just a minute that Jesus went through. He came to this earth to be able to, to, to save his people, right? And he was willing to give his life, lived for 33 years here, the last three years of ministry, loving people, giving to people, sharing with people, caring for people, healing people. But there was a night when he knew that something was fixing to happen. And he went to the Garden of Gethsemane. And this Garden of Gethsemane is really just an olive grove. It's where uh, trees uh, bring forth olives. And so he went to this olive grove, and he went there to pray and be alone with his father and be able to talk to his father, to get away from the crowd, because he knew this was ramping up, and he knew something was fixing to happen. And in John 18, 1 through 2, it says, After saying these things, Jesus crossed the Kidron Valley with his disciples and entered a grove of olive trees. Judas, the betrayer, which this is a person who gives him over, knew this place because Jesus had often gone there with his disciples. So think this through. Jesus is escaping somewhat for the moment to pray to his father, and, but Judas knows this place. And so Judas is not far behind with the soldiers. And so Jerusalem is not very big, so this would not have been very far away. He might have even been able to hear the commotion going on from the garden. And so he's in the garden, and he's praying, and he's talking to the Father. And Peter, James, and John are there at the beginning. In Mark 14, 34, it says, He told them, My soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. He's been rejected. Stay here and keep watch with me. He's talking to Peter, James, and John. He went on a little further, and he fell to the ground. Deep rejection. He prayed that if it were possible, the awful hour awaiting him might pass him by. Abba, Father, he cried out, everything is possible for you. Please take this cup of suffering away from me. So Jesus, who is all God and all man at the same time, I know it blows my mind too. I can't put my mind completely around it. But his fleshly side is saying, I don't want to go through with this. Lord, if there's any other way, if there's any other way for this to happen, take it from me. I don't want to go through this. And I don't know if you know this or not about the Garden of Gethsemane, but there is a place where you can easily escape out of the Garden of Gethsemane and into the Judean desert. So he could have easily, at any moment, he knows they're coming for him. He's felt the rejection. He's felt the pain. He's at his lowest point as a man, okay, that he could be at. And he has every opportunity to escape to the Judean desert and probably not be found that night at all. But this is what he says. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. So he faces the greatest of rejections. But at, the, at that moment, he knows he doesn't want to go through the pain. He doesn't want to go through the struggle. I'm sure his fleshly side wanted to run away. But instead, he says, Father, whatever you want done. So in our lives, we can stay, we can run away from it. But you know what? It's still there. Jesus knew he could run away for a time period, but the problem was still going to be there. And he knew that he couldn't carry out the Father's will unless he stayed and dealt with the problem, stayed and dealt with the issue, stayed through the struggle. Sometimes in our lives, we want to run away, and we keep running, and we keep running, but the problem doesn't go away. Sometimes we need to just say, number three, this is the third choice. We need to just say, I'm going to turn to God, and not my will but your will. It doesn't have to be easy. 
It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be where it makes me feel good. But it's going to be your will, Father, what you want done in my life, what you want done with that past rejection, with that past pain. So I think that we could look at all of this this semester and we could say, I'm, I'm, I could stay stuck. I could stay, stay stuck. Or we could look at it and we could say, I could run away. And that would be the easy thing to do for a moment. But the life-changing thing to do is to turn to God with our experiences that we've had this semester and say, God, your will be done in my life. Change me. Heal me. See, I'm not somebody that thinks that you can never be healed from from things in your life. A lot of people say, um, once you're in something, you're always in it. I'm not one of those people. I believe that God heals people really. I believe that he healed them in his day, Jesus' day in the Bible, and I believe that he heals people right now. Now, am I going to tell you that it's an easy process? Mm -mm. I've seen people healed of things that it took 10 years for them to get healed of it. I've seen people be healed of things that it took two or three years of counseling to get through it. See, some of these things we're pushing aside and we're running away from, that's the very thing that God wants to use to change us. He doesn't want to waste those experiences you've been through. You say, you know what, I've been through some terrible stuff. You know what, I bet you have. But if you don't use it, if you run from it, or if you stay stuck in it, then God can't use it, and he won't use it. But when we are able to turn to God and say, your will, Father, change me, heal me, then he's able to not only heal us, but then we're able to turn around and help somebody else with their healing. And that's the beauty of what God does that nobody else can do and no fix can do. In Deuteronomy 11, 22 through 23, it says, Be careful to obey all these commands I'm giving you. Show love to the Lord your God by walking in his ways and holding tightly to him. Then the Lord will drive out all the nations ahead of you, though they are much greater and stronger than you, and you will take over their land. If he can do that for them in the Bible, he can do that for us. Nothing is too big for our God. You say, oh, God can't work in the circumstance that I've been through. It's too big. Are you serious? God, I have seen God heal people of some things that I personally thought, there's no way. But God can do that. But we have to come with that heart that says, I'm open to you, Father. I don't have to control what it looks like. How many of y'all are control freaks? Anybody? Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. I'm I'm a sufferer, fellow sufferer. But you know what? We don't have to control what that looks like to be healed. We just have to release and say, God, you're in control. John 15, 5 says, yes, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do what? Nothing. Not a thing. So we can run away We can stay stuck, but God wants us to find healing and freedom. So we need to use the things that God has shown us. God will use the rejection to grow us, but he doesn't want us to stay there. So I thought about a few things today as I was walking through this. I thought, you know what? I felt uninvited before, and that's a fact from my past. I have felt uninvited but it's not the destiny of my future. You know, I have felt lonely before, and that's a fact from my past, but it's not the destiny of my future. I've felt rejected before, and that's a fact from my past, but it's not the destiny of my future. I've been disappointed. I've been bitter. I've been angry before, and that's a fact from my past but it does not have to be the destiny of my future. I've used other things to make me happy. I've used other things to put a Band-Aid over the feelings that I have. But that's a fact of my past, and it does not have to be the destiny of my future. And you're the same way tonight. You don't have, you have those things in your past, and those are facts. But it does not have to be 
your destiny. Through Christ, we all have the opportunity for it to be different. So tonight, I ask you this question as you're going to go to your groups, and it's the final night, and it's the final night to talk about. And some of you maybe have not even shared your greatest rejection yet. You've been scared. Maybe because of past rejection, you've been scared. But that's okay. That's okay. Tonight may be your night to share that rejection that you've been holding in. Because remember, we don't want to run away. We don't want to stay stuck. We want to say, Father, your will be done. We want to let him work in our lives. And so when you go to your group tonight, I want you to think about those rejections. I want you to think about all the things you've learned this semester. And then walk through those questions and see what God reveals so that you cannot leave. Don't leave this semester without the things being said that need to be said for your healing to take place whether it's in the group or it's in your heart between you and God. Don't leave this semester and lose all these wonderful nuggets that we've learned. Don't leave and go back to being stuck or back to running away. Let's be different. Let's heal. Let's heal so that we can be the people of God that he's called us to be so that we can lead others to the water because he is the living water. So let's, let's pray. Let's bow our heads tonight. Dear Lord God, you've brought us through some amazing things this semester. You've revealed yourself in a way, God, that I don't remember having before. Lord, you've taught us such amazing truths from your word. But Lord, tonight... We need to hear about how to wrap this up into something that works in our life. Lord, something that changes us, something that lets us heal so that we can be different. I believe, Lord, that you came so that we could be different, not stay lost in our sin, not stay lost in our bitterness or our disappointment or our grief, but, Lord, that you can make us new again, refresh us. And, Lord, that we might live differently and we might be different and others could see that in us and desire to have what we have in our communion with you. Lord, you change lives. You change our hearts. And so tonight, God, I pray over every one of these women that you would touch their heart in an amazing way, that your Holy Spirit would work in their hearts. And God, that you would bring forth something in us that we've never experienced before. And that all these hurts and rejections and past disappointments, that we would learn how to deal with those with you. That we would learn how to let you into those places. That we would learn, God, that you're the only real healer. That all these other things that we put out there, Lord, they don't heal us. But we know that you really can, and you do, and you will. Lord, we ask you tonight to to not let us focus on the past, that those things are facts. We know that they happened. But God, that we might abide in you, and we might learn to have a different destiny, a different future. Lord, we know we have the choice. So tonight, Lord, help us to choose not to be stuck, not to run away, but God, to choose you. Lord, fill in all the places in our hearts that we need you. We desperately need you. Lord, I I love these women. I thank you for your word. I thank you for Jesus. I thank you for him being the greatest picture of rejection And yet he stayed, and he loved, and he cared. And Lord, he was crucified, but there was a resurrection day coming. Lord, he wasn't left in that tomb, but Lord, he was resurrected. And we have times where we have to crucify these things in our life, so there can be a resurrection day. And Lord God, we're grateful that you're the author of our resurrection day. Lord, we love you. 
We praise you for revealing these things to us. We praise you for the relationships that we've made in real women. We praise you for your word and for the way your Holy Spirit convicts us and tells us that your word is so true. So tonight, Lord, go with us to our groups, God. Reveal yourself. Let us grab hold of who you are that we may be different. We love you and we praise you. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.